NASA's plan is to build a base on the moon before sending people to Mars to reduce the process of reaching Mars. SpaceX founder Elon Musk wants to name the race to go to Mars. In addition, European and Russian space agencies also talk about sending people to Mars. But after landing in the harsh atmosphere of Mars, how will humans live there? Because unlike the Earth, the biggest need of life on Mars is not oxygen. NASA has found a way to make oxygen on Mars. And the way the International Space Station makes oxygen. Why can't that way work on Mars? Welcome to TIT TV. Viewers, there are many reasons behind humans' desire to live on Mars, in which there is a factor of scientific exploration and space curiosity. But there is also a compulsion or fear among these desires. That is, that the human race may not end due to any disaster on Earth. Like 6.5 crow years ago, dinosaurs died from our world. And it is also possible that we are seeing an example of climate change on Earth. This is probably the biggest reason that in the near future, someone will become Neil Armstrong. On one hand, Elon Musk had previously planned to colonize Mars in 2026, but now he has predicted 2029. You, you've slightly put back the expected date to put uh, the first human on Mars till 2029, I, I want to say. Um, yeah, I mean, so, so uh, let's see, I mean, we, we, are, we have built a production system for Starship, so we're, we're, we're making a lot of ships and boosters. NASA has also intended to land humans on Mars by 2030. But the question is not who will go to Mars first. The question is how humans will survive after going to Mars. Of course, many properties of Mars are similar to Earth, like one day of Mars, which is also called Martian day or Sol. Its length is only more than 39 minutes compared to Earth's day. There are also different seasons there and on Earth too. Apart from this, there are ice caps on Earth's poles and on Mars poles too. There is also atmosphere on Earth, although it is thin on Mars, but there is certainly atmosphere. But one thing that is absolutely not enough for humans to live on Mars is oxygen. So how will this oxygen gas be made on Mars? Not for one or two people, but to keep an entire colony of Mars. If we talk about keeping humans alive in an extreme situation, the first thing that comes to mind is the IS. It has passed 25 years in harsh conditions of space today, and it has been continuously providing people with oxygen and fresh water. There are four to five astronauts in the International Space Station every time, whose daily water requirement is at least 45 liters, i.e. 1350 liters per month and 16,200 liters per year. In addition, 1,000 kg of oxygen gas is used annually on the IS. How is so much water and oxygen made in space, 400 km away from Earth? There are two systems in the eyes for this work. One is the water reclamation system, and the other is the oxygen generation system. To understand why we can't use these two systems on Mars, we must first understand how these systems work. The water reclamation system collects water from human waste, I, urine, sweat, and humidity, and then cleans it and makes it drinkable again. Astronaut Douglas V. Locke once said that our coffee from yesterday becomes the coffee of the next day. The ORS system purifies the water already present in the IS and makes it usable again. In this way, 98 E of the water is saved from being wasted. Equal to this is the oxygen generation system. This system takes a little water from the ORS and then passes it through a special process to make oxygen to breathe. We had studied this simple process in the fifth class, which is called electrolysis. The electrical current is passed through water which turns water into oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. Oxygen gas is used to breathe, but hydrogen is a very dangerous and inflammable gas, which can burn the entire is in seconds and make a fireball. This hydrogen gas is not wasted, but it is put into another system, which is called the Sabatier system. The system collects the waste carbon dioxide of the astronauts present in the ice, mixes it with hydrogen gas, mixes it with hydrogen gas, makes water, methane gas, and a little heat from it. Water is brought back into use, 
heat is put into the heat management system. But methane gas, which is very important to the Earth, is taken out of the Earth, is taken out of the IS into space. Methane gas is also a kind of fuel. It can make energy and heat, but it is wasted. But it is wasted because it needs oxygen to burn it. And oxygen is the most valuable on IS. If we look at the whole process of water and oxygen of IS, it depends on refueling missions. Because it is 90, 80 efficient, but there are still losses and leakages in every system. This is why every six months or after a year, water and oxygen are brought from the ground and put into the IS. These refueling missions are very costly, in which only one liter of water is more than a 2500 to reach the IS 400 kilometers above. So making oxygen in the same way on Mars 250 million kilometers away is not cost effective in any way. For this, a system must be created that uses the resources present on Mars and makes oxygen from it. In 2021, a device was installed for this experiment in the NASA's Perseverance rover sent to Mars, which is called the MOSI, because in IS, the water source is refueling. But to find water on Mars, you have to go to its polar caps or drill several feet down to get ice. That's why MOXIE uses carbon dioxide from the atmosphere of Mars to make oxygen out of it. To put it simply, there is 95 carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of Mars. MOXIE pumps carbon dioxide from the outer atmosphere to pressurize it, and then puts it in an electrolyzer and heats it at a temperature of 800 degrees Celsius, which separates the oxygen gas from the carbon dioxide. This electrolyzer is made of gold because gold is an excellent heat conductor that protects the other parts of the perseverance from heat. In this process, carbon dioxide, along with oxygen gas, also produces carbon monoxide. The disadvantage of this is that if carbon is completely separated in this process, then it can also make a layer of carbon, as seen below the cooking pan. And this layer will not delay the damage to perseverance. This is why this process is performed very carefully. But how much oxygen does MOXIE produce on Mars at a time? In this process, MOXIE needs a lot of energy. So NASA sometimes runs it when energy is saved from the solar panels. So far, it has only produced 122 grams of oxygen, which can keep a person alive for only three and a half hours. If we have to produce more oxygen on Mars through this system, then MOXIE has a and a big power plant to run it. And this is the biggest challenge so far. Now the thing to understand here is that MOXIE first compresses carbon dioxide with the help of a compressor, then heats it at 800 degrees Celsius. A lot of energy is required for both these processes. Scientists are working on a future technology to solve this problem, in which the molecule of carbon dioxide can be broken down at a low temperature. In this, the carbon dioxide will not be heated, but vibration will be created in it, and the oxygen molecule will be separated from it. Currently, this technology has been tested in the lab, but due to the high atmospheric pressure and temperature of the Earth, it is not possible to do this experiment on Earth. But the atmosphere of Mars is perfect for this task, no matter what technology is. Our target is to use such a thing on Mars to make oxygen that is present there. And the device that will make this oxygen, their dependency will not be on Earth. Because IS is only 400 kilometers away from Earth. If the oxygen generation system there is damaged, then sending astronauts back to Earth is not such a big deal. They can wear their emergency suits and wait for a few hours for refuel hours for refueling and can go back to Earth. But if there is any problem in the oxygen generation machine after colonization on Mars, then neither will there be a refueling option, nor will it be so easy to go back to Earth. Hey, you've arrived at the end of the video and thank you so much for watching. But don't click off just yet. I do want to take the time to say thank you very much for watching to the end. These things take quite a few sleepless nights to research, script, film, and edit. So you can't imagine how much I really do appreciate your support. If you genuinely enjoyed this video, then don't be shy. Hit the like button. And if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. And comment down below and let me know why. My goal with this channel has been to create 
create entertaining documentary style videos on business, finance, and life in general. And if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, and you'd want to tune in for more, hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Make sure all your notifications are turned on. But with all of that being said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. As per usual, my friends hand-to-head salute from TIT TV.